Okay, thanks, Bob and Brian, for the introduction. Um, so I'm here to talk about high-fidelity weather simulation. This is uh, something I developed in my doctoral work here at, at UW-Madison, where I manage a flight simulation laboratory that where we do, we, we, we create high-fidelity weather experiences for pilots to train them to make better decisions to improve aviation safety and hopefully save lives. My name is Chris Johnson. I have a PhD in engineering. I'm also a commercially rated instructor pilot. And this uh, training system I'm working on for about five years uh, based on high fidelity weather simulation. And the FAA funded this research to fix weather related accidents, try to mitigate those. And so when we think about weather related accident, uh, a, a concern that comes to mind is VFR flight into IMC, visual flying into instrument weather. And this is the most deadly type of aircraft accident right now. Uh, there's an 86% mortality rate annually since 2000. And this happens because pilots get spatially disoriented when they fly into weather or they control their flight into uh, terrain or obstacles. Uh, classic case study is John F. Kennedy Jr. He uh, became spatially disoriented. He was a VFR only pilot, flew into IMC over water at night and he killed himself, his, his wife and his sister-in-law, they're on their way to a wedding. And so this is the classic case study that I, that I um, present when um, presenting this weather-related accidents. But there's also a local pain point here. Uh, UW MedFly about four years ago lost a crew. Uh, they were flying around marginal weather, uh, and they flew into the side of the, the, the bluff near La Crosse, Wisconsin. The, the pilot was an instrument-rated pilot, but he wasn't current. He was VFR only at the time. And so this is a, a serious concern. I'm actually working with MedFlight to try to develop uh, better training for, for these guys as well. So one of the big problems is visual training. Visual training is a problem because basically pilots are held to a higher standard, uh, more conservative weather minimums. They're not allowed to fly into marginal weather until the day that they, they get their license. And that's a big problem. They don't have this experience to uh, make good weather-related decisions. So we need to engineer that for them, and that's what I do. Uh, another big problem is actual instrument flying. What you see here is a guy that's practicing to fly in instruments, and he's wearing a hood. While that teaches a good instrument scan so he can orient himself, it doesn't tell him how to uh, detect bad weather and get on the radio and, and try to get weather reports to make decisions. So this is a problem as well, and that's why I say that instrument flight training is inadequate. Uh, another big problem is powerful avionics. What you see here is a legacy system. It's a traditional six-pack with navigation radios. A pilot will tune into radios and follow a line to know where they need to go. It needs a very rapid instrument scan to maintain um, orientation, and you can get radio-based weather reports. But the problem is that we're moving to these more powerful avionic systems where you have synthetic vision, you have GPS, and you get overlaid weather. And previous research has actually shown that synthetic vision actually induces risk. It creates pilots' uh, willingness to accept weather risk and they'll fly further. Same thing with GPS and same thing with overlaid weather. So we're, we're building these cockpits to give pilots the tools, but uh, it's really risky. Um, another big problem is ground school training. Uh, the old school training tries to teach pilots how to identify hazardous attitudes and they teach them little antidotes to, uh, to overcome these attitudes, which is really basic training. But you have more advanced training where it's case study of a vi visual pilot flying into INC and actually losing their lives and pilots can learn this way. But all in all, they don't get that experience, so it's, it's quite inadequate. So if we look at weather simulation as a way to engineer this, what you see here is how you control the weather. It's a guided user interface but it takes so much of the instructor's time and the weather's not dynamic. So I'm trying to fix this interface because it's not adequate. Basically, I want to make, I'm using a historical weather database to drive this simulation and produce weather reports to sort, uh, support pilots' roles as, as meteorologists. And so to, to build this, I, I took this uh, UW flight simulator and I beefed it up. You can use any simulator. We're plugging in the software to existing simulations. So we have a FAA approved machine here at UW. Uh, and then the second uh, thing that I did was I, I collected a bunch of weather. On the next slide, you'll see uh, a t standard pre-flight weather briefing. This is 20, page, 20 pages of weather and, and images that pilots need to read before even making a go or no-go decision. And so I archived this weather database, and I'm using it as a weather engine to power existing hardware. So basically what you do is you take any hardware machine. On the next slide, you'll see this. And, and use the database to create a pre-flight weather briefing. So that's what my company does. We've, we've engineered the pre-flight experience. And when you're ready to go fly, you click a button and it pumps all the weather data into the simulator so you get the dynamics and the weather reports. And I also have a post-flight feedback tool that recaps the situation. So basically, you can try to go fly the route that John F. Kennedy Jr. Uh, killed himself in. 
Uh, when I tested this, I, I, I tested this on equal groups, 16 groups of VFR pilots and IFR pilots. I also separated them by high total time and low total time. And I also separated them by high IMC time and low IMC time. And the only significant statistical difference I found was this high IMC time versus low IMC time. This is really interesting because IFR rating is, is kind of discredited here. And what you see is the output here. The blue, every time you see a step down is when a, in a pilot turn around. The blue are the high experience guys and the red are the low experience guys. So basically the low, I, uh, the IMC experience people are flying further into the weather. And this is a, a really interesting finding to show that IMC experience is the most important factor, not, not the license. Um, so and, and to recap, we have all these problems. UFR flight training is inadequate. Pilot, pilots are shielded from marginal weather. They're flying around under hoods, not in real weather. And weather simulation is inadequate. And so I built this high fidelity weather simulation model to give pilots experience with hazardous weather so they can learn and survive uh, real weather scenarios. Uh, this can be used for medical evacuation training. Um, this is probably one of the deadliest career fields, but one of the most heroic. And pilots are continually dying because they're flying in marginal weather conditions uh, that overwhelm them. Uh, another practical use you'll see on the next slide is networked virtual training. And so if you have a historic weather database, um, and you can feed it to network simulators, air traffic control simulators, command and control. You can basically have the substance of a virtual world. So think holodeck, uh, um, Star Trek things. So you can actually design training so you can integrate all these different uh, professionals into the same virtual world. So that's the concept. I appreciate you guys giving me your undivided attention. Again, I'm Chris Johnson, Pilot Training Systems, the company. And we're, right now I'm working on trying to commercialize this. I have some funding to commercialize it. And I'm also working with MedFlight to try to, to do the patient simulation inside of an aircraft simulator. So thank you.